My name is Marshall Wolf. Uh, I'm a graduate student at Utah State University, Department of Watershed Science in the Ecology Center. And one of my projects that I'm working on for my PhD is the Beaver Dam Analog Project here at Swanner Preserve. And so our goal is to promote the stream processes that beavers promote, which is like channel migration, flood, overbank flooding, that will help establish and maintain those woody riparian vegetation communities with the ultimate goal of attracting beaver to come back and kind of maintain these stream reaches for us and take our job so that we don't have to keep building and maintaining and re-restoring these reaches over and over and over again. A beaver dam analog is essentially designed to mimic both the physical structure in the stream and then the actual functions to the operation of a stream ecosystem that a natural beaver dam would provide. And so what they actually are are essentially just a series of wooden posts that are knocked into the stream about three to four feet deep into the substrate and sticking out another three to four feet. And then we kind of use all natural on-site materials, including willows, rocks, sediments, soil, etc., to weave a beaver dam-like structure through those posts. And we kind of customize these or, or slightly modify the design based on the exact particular uh, conditions of any location that a beaver dam analog might be put at to accommodate those different types of habitats that we're building these in. So some key indicators that we're monitoring is temperature and dissolved oxygen within the stream. Um, East Canyon Creek has historically within the last 10 to 15 years been impaired for both of those temperature and dissolved oxygen, sometimes to a level so low that it can kill native fish species. Another process that we're monitoring is the fish responses. So we're kind of collecting information on the fish community by electrofishing, running essentially low voltage electricity through the water in order to stun and capture fishes, which we then identify to species. We take length and weight measurements on them. We actually um, inject them with what's called a pit tag that has a unique code and allows us to, um, with 100% certainty, say that we have or have not captured this individual before. Another response that we're really interested in is the actual groundwater. So we have at our restoration reaches, at our BDA reaches, we have about six groundwater wells that we're monitoring for kind of how groundwater is changing over the course of a season and how it was prior to the BDAs versus after we built them. Um, and then kind of our last big response is stream morphology or geomorphology as it's known. So we've been conducting physical surveys of the stream using about a two centimeter accuracy GPS device. And we can kind of compare how things looked prior to the beaver dam analogs that we've built to after and then also at places that we haven't been modifying to get an idea of you know, how much erosion or deposition or are we increasing the level of the stream bed getting closer to the floodplain like we'd like to, things like that. Um, and then with the vegetation, we fly a drone over the sites at about maybe 100 feet each time and that allows us to get about two to three centimeter accuracy pixels so that we can delineate patches of vegetation and see how these woody riparian species like willows and cottonwoods are changing versus plants that are more upland and that aren't so desirable in the floodplain zone that we like to see eventually replaced with more native kind of riparian obligate plants. So really our end goal here with the, with the Beaver Dam Analog Project is to encourage the recruitment and kind of retainment of native species like Bonneville cutthroat trout, which were historically in this section of stream, but currently aren't and maintain the biodiversity that we have here, like the native pylos crayfish or the sandhill crane population that breeds here every summer. Um, that would be a beautiful thing.